The heart of Mount Etna, Sicily's ever-active giant, has just become more mysterious. Beneath the Sicilian summit lie not one but two distinct magma stores, and that revelation forces a rethink of how this volcano builds pressure, vents gas, and chooses between slow lava flows and sudden, spectacular fountains. Why did this second layer remain hidden for so long, and what does its presence tell us about the mechanics that drive Etna's eruptions? Could a deeper, steady reservoir and a shallow, bubbly pocket together explain the volcano's habit of switching moods so quickly? For decades, volcanologists pictured Etna's interior as a single, perhaps vertically continuous plumbing system. Recent geophysical work has changed that view. Etna appears to host a dual-level magma storage system. The first is an intermediate reservoir sitting at roughly four to six kilometers below sea level, about two and a half to three and seven tenths miles. The second is a much shallower, gas-rich pocket located around sea level, immediately beneath the summit craters. This arrangement is not simply an anatomical curiosity. It lays out a layered mechanism that governs how magma is stored, how volatiles behave, and how energy is released at the surface. The intermediate reservoir, at about four to six kilometers depth, acts as a long-term magma bank. Geodetic surveys, continuous global positioning measurements, and ground tilt recordings show that when magma is injected into this depth range, the volcano swells steadily over months to years. The signature is broad uplift of the edifice and subtle changes in gravity consistent with large-volume magma emplacement. In some well-studied episodes, magma accumulated in that intermediate zone long before any material reached the surface. That storage phase produces a slow, sustained inflation signal and often precedes the kind of long-lived lava flows that drain large volumes of degassed magma. Above the intermediate bank sits the shallow storage a compact, gas-rich pocket located at about sea level and a few hundred metres below the summit conduits. The existence of this shallow layer became clear through ultra-sensitive strain measurements and the timing of eruptive events. Instruments deployed in boreholes detected minute volumetric changes of the rock right before and during lava fountain episodes. Models that reproduce those signals require a small deflating source near the summit. In other words, magma was being drained from a shallow pocket as fountains erupted. That pocket is not a calm reservoir. It is a volatile-laden crucible where dissolved gases such as water vapour, carbon dioxide and sulphur species are free to exsolve and drive explosive dynamics. Why does a two-tiered system arise at Etna? The physics is rooted in buoyancy, pressure, and the mechanical contrast of rocks with depth. Ascending magma may slow and pond, where a change in mechanical properties creates a roof strong enough to temporarily hold molten material. The intermediate reservoir is large and can be relatively degassed compared with shallower magma. It stores mass and thermal energy. When new magma pulses into this reservoir, pressure builds and the edifice inflates. Eventually, pathways open or magma is squeezed upward, allowing some of that material to migrate into the overlying shallow zone. As magma rises into the shallow pocket, ambient pressure drops and dissolved volatiles begin to come out of solution, forming bubbles that substantially change the system's dynamics. The shallow pocket therefore behaves like a staging area for volatile-rich magma that can catastrophically decompress and propel lava fountains skyward. Each reservoir leaves different fingerprints on the data. The intermediate reservoir's activity registers as broad, 
long period deformation. The mountain gently rises and gravity shifts in a manner consistent with the emplacement of dense molten rock. Seismicity associated with this level tends to concentrate in swarms of small earthquakes at intermediate depths, reflecting the stress adjustments as magma moves and pressurizes pore spaces. By contrast, the shallow pocket announces itself in high-frequency short-term signals. Sudden contractions recorded by dilatometers, abrupt changes in gas emission rates, and very shallow seismicity often herald fountains. Put simply, slow inflation at depth often preludes effusive activity, while sudden shallow pressurization triggers explosive fountains. The shallow system is responsible for Etna's most spectacular displays, the lava fountains that send incandescent jets of magma hundreds of meters into the air. The mechanism of these fountains is straightforward in principle and ferocious in effect. Magma trapped near the surface contains dissolved volatiles held under high pressure. If magma is rapidly decompressed, for example by rapid ascent into a vent, or by the rapid evacuation of overlying rock, bubbles nucleate and expand explosively. That rapid exolution converts stored pressure into kinetic energy, fragmenting magma into droplets and pyroclasts that are hurled upward. The shallow pocket on Etna, intimate to the summit conduits, is the immediate source of such bubbly magma. Because the pocket is compact, its pressurization and depressurization can be rapid, producing the short violent fountain events that a casual observer might mistake for isolated outbursts, but which in fact reflect a well-structured subsurface process. The intermediate reservoir, in contrast, governs longer-term eruptive styles. When magma from depth reaches the summit more gradually and without abrupt decompression, the bubbles escape slowly or are lost at depth, and the magma emerges as lava flows rather than fountains. This degassed magma is denser and tends to feed effusive, persistent eruptions that can extend down the flanks. The replenishment of the intermediate reservoir controls the long-term mass balance of the volcano, how much magma is available to feed sustained flows, and how often the shallow pocket can be refilled with volatile-laden material. Unraveling these two layers required a convergence of methods. Researchers combined continuous surface deformation records from GPS networks and tilt meters with dense seismic monitoring and gravity measurements. micro seismicity maps trace magma migration pathways. Clusters of tiny earthquakes mark zones where magma interacts with surrounding rock, and broad patterns of seismic quiescence can indicate molten zones that are aseismic. High precision strain instruments placed in boreholes detected the subtle contractions associated with magma withdrawal from near surface storage during fountain eruptions. Satellite radar observations helped map longer term deformation across the edifice. Only by layering these datasets did a consistent picture of an intermediate reservoir topping out at about four to six kilometers and a smaller, shallow, gas-rich pocket around sea level emerge. This layered plumbing explains some long-standing puzzles about Etna's behavior. One puzzle is why the volcano can alternate between effusive flank eruptions that pour lava for days to months and near-summit fountain events that last only hours, yet produce intense ballistic activity and ash. The two-tier model shows that much depends on where magma stalls and how volatiles partition between levels. A deep recharge that remains largely trapped in the intermediate zone will tend to feed prolonged flows. But if new magma ascends quickly into the shallow pocket, or if shallow pathways open so that gas-laden magma can rapidly decompress, then fountains follow. The interplay between the two reservoirs creates 
conditional behaviour. Small changes in rate, pressure or structural permeability can flip the system from one mode to another. The discovery also sharpens monitoring strategies. For forecasting, it matters whether signals indicate loading of the intermediate reservoir or pressurization of the shallow pocket. Long-term uplift, sustained gravity increase, and a swarm of intermediate depth microearthquakes point to deep recharge and a higher likelihood of effusive long-duration eruptions. Sudden shallow seismicity spikes, abrupt strain changes recorded by borehole sensors, and rapid changes in gas emissions indicate the shallow pocket is primed for explosive activity. Knowing which level is active allows volcanologists to refine short-term hazard assessments. Fissure opening, lava flow paths, and the likelihood of fountain-driven tephra hazards can all be inferred more accurately when the storage level is identified. There are broader implications for volcanic mechanics as well. A stratified storage system implies that the physical properties of the crust its permeability, strength, and thermal structure actively shape where magma pauses and where gas separates. The size difference between the reservoirs matters. A large, deep tank can accumulate substantial mass without immediate surface consequence, whereas a small, shallow tank loaded with volatiles can produce a disproportionately large surface display. The shallow tank acts as a pressure amplifier. Even modest injections of fresh magma into it can trigger dramatic fountains. The timing and interaction between injections at depth and transfers to the shallow level therefore control both eruption frequency and style. For science enthusiasts watching Etna's next display, the takeaway is this. The volcano's personality is written in layers. What appears as sudden spectacle at the surface is the end product of a structured subsurface process where depth and gas content decide whether magma oozes or explodes. The discovery of a dual-level storage system does not make eruptions any less dangerous, but it gives volcanologists firmer ground from which to interpret signals and anticipate style changes. Etna is not a single pot boiling, but a two-decker system with different rules on each shelf. A deep, steady reservoir that refills the mountain's mass and a shallow, bubbly pocket that produces the firework shows. Understanding these two layers brings us closer to reading the volcano's hidden instructions, written in ground tilt, tiny earthquakes and the chemistry of escaping gases. If you found this deep dive into Mount Etna fascinating, don't let it stop here. Hit like to support science-driven content, share this video so more people can understand what's really happening beneath our feet, and subscribe for more in-depth breakdowns of Earth's most powerful forces. And don't forget to tap that hype icon. It tells the algorithm this story matters and helps this video reach a much wider audience. Your support keeps this channel exploring the science behind the planet's most incredible phenomena.